Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff, you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. Spark plug replacement 2012 Dodge Durango 3.6 liter V6 engine. There's a time. There's a cover that just pops off. You just lift it off. We'll squeeze these connectors right here and release it. Just push this piece in and release. This little red tab, we'll probably push the red tab back probably and then squeeze to release this. Maybe slide it off here somehow. We'll take this hose off here. We've got uh, eight millimeter bolts here on the top to get this off, upper intake plenum, so we can get to the spark plugs on the driver's side. <clears throat> 8mm 516s or a flat blade screwdriver for this and one over here. On the passenger side, fairly easy. Got three coils, three 10 millimeter bolts to take out. Again, we can just possibly push the terminal down. And release it like that. bolt doesn't need to come out of the coil. Flexible. A twist. Pull. And take this out and without even disconnecting it. So that's an option if you want to save yourself seconds. Don't unplug them. Using a spark plug socket they come in several lengths and sizes. We're going to use a uh, deep uh, 5 8 one. It's got a little rubber boot in there, helps hold the spark plug so you can pull it out. Left to loosen, right to tighten for all bolts and nuts on this vehicle. Spark plug is out. All right, so the spark plug uh, gap on this is 0 0.040 or 1.0 millimeter, and torque is about 13 foot pounds for the 3.6 liter V6. So we got our spark plug, we got our gapper. We'll check the gap here. Seems to be only around uh, 28 or 29. We'll need to open that up a little bit to get to 40. Several different uh, types of spark plug gappers. You want to be a little careful either with iridium or platinum, whatever tip type they're using. You want to be careful not to damage it, so be careful when you're making adjustments. But we're just going to put it in here and give it a tweak up. Pull up a little bit. Pretty good.
we'll do this for all six of them, of course. Oh, a little too far, maybe. You can tap it on a hard surface. Bring it down a little bit. Pretty good. My personal opinion, if you're within a couple thousands, you're going to be fine, you know. 0 0.038 to 0 0.042 is probably going to be fine. And it won't fall out. Drop it down in here and turn it in and start all bolts and nuts by hand. Until we hit bottom basically. Thirteen foot pounds. Let's see how far it is actually. Usually they say a certain amount after it touches bottom. Quarter ninety, hundred and eighty degrees. So just over hundred and eighty degrees. So that's the basics of replacing your spark plugs. I'll do the same for all the rest, and now we'll get to taking the intake them off so that we can do the driver's side. So we're on the driver's side and the trickiest part might be, uh, well it might want you to take this piece out here but it's already broken. We got two brackets over here, a metal bracket back there and here, 10 millimeter nut. Well, 10 millimeter nut back there. And also down there is maybe a 13 millimeter, and I'm sure on the back side, which you can't even see, is the same. You're just going to have to go by feel down there. That's going to be the toughest part here. Take these nuts off here, and the bottom ones you can actually probably just loosen until this bracket is loose enough to flop off the stud. And then we'll uh, take out these 8 millimeter bolts that hold this in place and see what happens, see if we can get enough clearance to get to the spark plugs on this side. Maybe disconnect these hoses if you want and see if you can get them out of the way at all. Depending on how old your vehicle is, how brittle they might be. So I'm gonna work on the other nut back there and uh, then I'm going to take out these bolts here and I'll catch up with you. Okay, I got all the bolts loose here. Even one down in here. Can't really see it, but I used a 8 millimeter and a swivel and about a 5 inch extension. Uh, just a quarter inch set up here and I uh, got them all loose. And it's loose, I just end up I got the 10 millimeter nut off here and back there and I think we can actually just slide it over without messing with those bottom parts of the mounts and as you see here I also did uh, remove that it helped a little bit with some space right there so I'm gonna work on doing this and undoing these are just friction fits just grabbed on with little metal claws And then probably just push down on it. Let's see if I can get this off too, though. from the back side there. Small screwdriver and lift it up on that little tab in there. Ooh. So, put that out of there. You see the jaws of the friction fit set up there and there's one more back there as well. 
and probably the mass airflow sensor maybe or uh, map sensors back there as well so we're gonna try to uh, disconnect a couple things and uh, get this thing to slide for us Gently remove the upper plenum. Tight fit back there with this nice insulation, but it's off. Hey, friendly spider. Not in great shape. And we can uh, move that. Maybe cover up these uh, intake holes here. And you can feel with your fingers. They stand up quite a bit, so it'll be up to you if you want to replace them cheap little kit maybe six to fifteen dollars they stand up pretty well so they could probably reuse these but if they feel flat then go ahead and replace them All right, same procedure over here 10 millimeter bolt you don't even have to disconnect this probably just twist and pull it out and replace your spark plugs if I think of something else then I'll show you what else you need to do I'll maybe just come back with some torque specs for you for the upper intake, it's probably like 89 inch pounds is my guess, 89, 105, somewhere in there. So these are pretty easy, they should just pick out. A little screwdriver, just pull out of a, a groove there. And just drop a new one in and push it in place. That's all there is to that. Really simple. To do that with the rest and uh, install the intake, upper intake. Okay, and then you want to make sure all these screws are screwed up into the intake a little bit. It'll make it much easier to install. You can see this one's hanging down. So while it's flopping around here, we'll push up on it with our fingers probably and turn it up so it stays into the intake. We'll make sure we do that, especially for the ones in the back. Kind of see how it's sitting in the hole there, making it tougher to uh, slide into place. So we'll make sure they're all up like these front ones are. Should make it much easier to install. Slide into place. I didn't see them, but I'm going to guess there's a couple guide pins maybe in here. Seems to have locked nicely into place. Got our uh, studs, of course, where they need to go. So that is uh, it. We'll zip these down again, then I'll give you uh, some torque specs on those babies. If you'd like, otherwise I'm sure a quarter inch ratchet just turned down tight. Uh, it's going to be fine. 71 inch pounds is all there is for those not too much at all hook up the line put your two nuts on over here hook up the hoses back on here install this tube back on put your uh, upper cover back on here's where the friction fits just sit on for the cover not a huge deal at all and then tighten your two clamps and that would re be replacing your spark plugs, your ignition coils, removing the uh, upper intake plenum, upper intake on your 2012 and other model years, 3.6 liter Dodge Durango. If this looks like your engine, this is probably going to work for you. Good luck to you.